Hi, my name is Marcus, and welcome to Servant King Unraveled. A brief introduction. A few years ago, the Attorney General of Texas told a group of parents, and I quote, The state of Texas owns your children. Not only your children, but you too. Now, how is it that these parents do not know who owns them? and they don't know who owns their children. How's that possible? Someone owns you, someone owns you and you don't even know it. You don't know you have an owner. Go ask anyone, who owns you? They won't know. I watched this series on TV called Roots about black slaves captured in Africa and brought to America. And they were chained like sardines in a, the hull of the boat. And then they were sold at auctions. And these black people could not read or write. Yet every one of these slaves knew who owned them. They knew their owner. And yet these well-educated professional people in Texas do not know who their owner is. Or who owns their children. Well... Where does that leave them in relation to these black slaves that couldn't read or write? Just think about that. Yet this slimy excuse of a man called a lawyer knows who owns you. You see, all of these well-educated professionals in Texas do not know who owns their children or who owns them. And now that they're told, they don't know why. So I guess they ask each other, like, hey, Bob, uh, do you know why? No, Bob, don't know why. Hey, let's ask Fred. He went to university. Maybe he knows why. Fred, do you know why? No, Fred don't know why either. And here's the difference between the black slaves and these people in Texas. The black people were captured like animals and taken against their will. But you voluntarily went into this subjection and you believe it's normal and the best you have. And just like the young black slaves that were born to the black slaves, the ones that were born into slavery, they knew no other way of life. And you don't know any other way of life either. It's all just normal. I had a police detective on the stand in court one day, and he had, he had taken stuff from me. He was a, a detective. He can detect things. That's what his job is. And I asked him, I said, that, that stuff that you took, um, who owns that? And he looked at me and said, well, you do. Meaning me. I own it. So I own it? I said to him, he goes, yes, you own it. I said, well... Did I say you could take it from me? And he went, no. And I could see in his face, he was thinking, yeah, how's that work? You own it, but I took it from you without asking you. So then I asked him, I said, uh, who told you to take it from me? And he didn't know what to say. After a few moments, I said to him, uh, now you said, you're testifying that you said, I, I own it. I did not give you permission to take it, and you took it from me. So I want to know who told you to take it from me. Now he just stood there with a puzzled look on his face for a, a moment or two, and then uh, finally said, um, I had judicial authority. <laughs> so I left it at that and thanked him for his insightful testimony. To own means to possess, to use, to control, to manage, and to dispose of to the exclusion of everyone else. Only you, just yours. So, who owns you? You ever think about that? Who has the right to possess you, to use you, to control you, to manage you, and to dispose of you? 
the only way to lose your right to own something is for you to be tricked or give it without informed consent. And uninformed consent is no consent at all. You know, people better wake up to this. There is nothing more important in life than what I'm going to show you. But you need to understand the law behind this. Property is the holy grail of law. The holy grail of law. What is a holy grail? The holy grail is something that you want very much but that is very hard to get. An object or goal that is sought after for its great significance. The holy grail. Well, to those that have ears, let them hear, and to those that have eyes, let them see. In the introduction to the confusion programs, I said, every swindle requires deceit and fraud, something that's not true. A really good swindle is one where you go away happy, not even knowing you've been swindled. And a really great swindle is one where you've been tricked unknowingly into being a part of the swindle. You can try to blame the guy who enticed and tricked you, but you were a participant. Who are you going to blame? Now that's the perfect swindle. The purpose of the confusion programs were to raise in your mind questions, to expose and show you things that are happening in our everyday lives, and to show you what some things really are, but mostly to cause confusion where none may have existed before. In other words, to raise questions you never thought to ask. I also made it very clear that you should check out all the facts, evidence, and proof for yourself. Check out for yourself what I presented and what some words really mean. If you just believe what I've presented to you, then you are still doing what you've always done. Believe in what you've been told. Predictable behavior. The guy who says that this is nonsense, I don't believe it, is just as foolish as the guy who believes it. Neither one checked it out for themselves. Both of them still know nothing. In the confusion programs, I said that all these programs could collectively be called confusion of property. I also said that all the problems you will ever have are the result of owning no property. In fact, I've been quite adamant about this thing called property. Well, as we unravel the confusion, you will see that this story is going to take a couple of more unexpected turns. A really great swindle always takes a number of unexpected turns. When I was told a few years ago that I do not own anything, my predictable behavior did not kick in, luckily. I used my brain instead of my training. I took the path least traveled. I took the path called thinking. <laughs> thinking for myself instead of my training and indoctrinations. I went in a different direction. I followed the property. But to understand the law on property, I will need to go to the origin or source of property. You see, the law is a lot different than religion or science or philosophy. So I looked at the only two possible origins of property. I took each premise and based on the principles of justice, I looked at the result of each premise as it relates to owning property. What happens as a result, the consequence of each premise. Now in the first premise where God created everything, everyone on earth would own their own property, subject only to the rules of God. God would be your government. You can't steal someone's property. You can't tell someone what to do with their property. And you can't get control of someone else's property. In the second premise, where there is no God, no owner of the property, no government, no laws, everyone must, in order to protect their claim to property, put everything in a common pot and jointly make the rules or laws governing it. Otherwise, every man would be a law unto themselves. However, when you do this, you can no longer own your property. You have lost control of all of your property, 
and you must follow the rules of whatever kind of God or government you made to, pr to protect your life, liberty, and property. But to protect it, you lose it. <laughs> the ultimate goof. I want to protect this. Oops, I just lost it. I looked up the word goof in the dictionary. It's defined as a man who is a stupid, incompetent fool. But when you say goof, it doesn't sound very offensive. Oops, I goofed. And this goof is the middle turn of the three turns of the perfect swindle. Now that you've lost ownership of all of your property, which includes you too, you are now owned by someone. Yeah, someone owns you. And he who owns you makes the rules. So if I wanted to get control of you and your property, meaning your being, your life, your inheritance, and your labor, what do I need to do? Well, I need to get rid of God. I need to get rid of your owner and his rules. I have to get rid of the law. This, of course, would result in chaos, no rules. Then I come in to solve the problem. I could profit by creating the chaos and profit by solving it. This is the exact definition of a racket, called racketeering. Now, to the extent I cannot or could not get rid of God, I would need to control and manage your knowledge of God control your knowledge of the law, and we will learn how that is done. I need you to unknowingly and voluntarily, and with a smile on your face, give up control over your life, liberty, and property. I need your consent. Rather than capture you and put you in chains, I need to put your mind in chains. You see, even though the scripture is widely available now to everyone, something has happened that nobody even wants to read it. The same book that Her Majesty the Queen called the most valuable thing in the world. Who would not want the most valuable thing in the world? Apparently nobody. The swindle is explained in the book. And the solution to the swindle is also in the book. As we unravel the confusion, you will see that what we call government or legal system is a complete counterfeit of real law with no basis in reality. Our legal system borrows principles of law from God's government, but the actual laws are switched out with our own laws, and the lawgiver is switched out with our own lawgiver, and the owner is switched out with a new owner. We have patterned and modeled our legal and judicial system after God's system of government because it is perfect. God's system is called the perfect law of liberty. No man on earth can have more liberty than obeying the perfect law. This is the reason our legal system appears good and right, but it's not. It's a forgery in substance and fictional in appearance from top to bottom. It is a system of 100% bondage, and there is no liberty in it. And now I'm going to tell you the most unbelievable discovery I made. Even though I knew I was on the right path for some time, this is what sealed the deal for me. And it can be summed up in this one sentence. If there is no God, then we must of necessity make a God, or there is no law. No rules. Or, if there is no owner, then we must of necessity make an owner. Or there is no law. And only an owner can make a law, can rule over his property. What we claim that God cannot do because it is impossible, we in fact do and believe it with all of our heart, our mind, and our soul in order to have a legal system. The ultimate hypocrisy. Of course, you do not know you are doing them, but you are. You see, the law has nothing to do with what you believe. The law has to do with what you do. If I were to believe the knowledge of God as it is widely reported, hell, I, I wouldn't believe in God either. I mean, who the hell does God think he is? 
God? A dictator? We don't like dictators. Dictators are bad. We want a dictator that uh, gives us free will. Yeah, a dictator that gives us free will. Who would believe something so contrary to itself to make it utterly stupid? Well, everyone does. We want a God who gives us commands that are voluntary. Hmm. I command you to do that, but uh, only if you want to. Who would believe that? Everyone does. In fact, atheists are not hypocrites. They are quite logical and reasonable people. Whether you label yourself an atheist or a religious man is irrelevant. What you believe is not relevant to the law. What you do is relevant, and both the atheists and the theists do the same thing. Everyone has a God, and that's just a fact. Most people think that when you talk about God, uh, oh, that's religion. And religion uses books called the Word of God, and, well, it might be the Word of God, but who knows for sure, and even if it is, that only applies to back then, in the olden days, to those people. It's, it's outdated. It's, it's uh, not relevant today. Man has advanced, and we have technology that wasn't known back then. We are modern people, and we need up-to-date laws. I wish there were a way to simply, easily, and quickly unravel the confusion. I wish there were a way to accommodate the guy who said to me, um, just explain it to me, I'm not stupid. Well, if you don't know who owns you, <laughs> then this is going to take a while, a process. Unfortunately, I have to take you through a process that is contrary to the only way of life you know. I will be putting before you the evidence, facts, and proof of what I present. I will be showing you the solution that many are seeking, all based on law, truth, reality, logic, and reason. No belief or faith required. You can pray to God asking Him to help you understand His plan if you like, but I don't think He's going to send you an email. Or you can do as you were told. Study His words and test all of it to see if it is true. And I will be showing you how to do the tests, and they're not as difficult as you may think. You see, God doesn't want believers. The world is full of those. He wants those who have studied to show themselves approved. And then he wants action, action, performance, act according to the script, act according to the scripture. He wants those who walk to talk, not talk to talk. He wants doers, doers of his word, not preachers of his word. And the benefits and rewards are not in the world to come. No, they're in this world, now, today. Time is at hand, now. So... If you're ready to learn what Her Majesty the Queen calls the most valuable thing in the world and what I simply call the science of God, then get a coffee or a beer and let me unravel you. Or, if you want to remain a beggar, then turn the TV on and watch Law and Order. <laughs> Choice is yours. Till then, my name is Marcus.